So she's like talking to, you know, thousands of women at the United Nations. And there's somebody standing there just close by going, I can take a deep breath. I can just look at the group and I can say exactly what I need to say. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna put my mask on like everybody else is and we're gonna do our trauma workshop. And we did. Oh, do you think this is um, a good day to open the theater? She said, of course, Kate dear. That's what she always called me, Kate dear. Um, Kate dear, of course, this is the night the witches should ride. <laughs> Hello, welcome to AB Lifetime channel on transpersonal psychology. Our topic today is healing trauma with therapeutic spiral model. Interview with Dr. Kate Hudgens. Kate, hello and welcome to AB Lifetime. New online educational project alert. If you learn psychodrama and you like to learn it online with pre-recorded videos format, please check actionexplorations.education in December 2020. At that moment, there will be the first programs. Please see the detailed information in the announcement at the end of this video. Could you please say uh, about clinical applications of uh, TSM? Well, you know, it's interesting that you, your question, what your question, my response is like, well, actually TSM is a clinical model of psychodrama. Like uh -huh. that's the whole point. Uh -huh. So no matter any time you're doing the therapeutic spiral model guided by our clinical map or you're doing the TSM psychodrama model of three different st stages in a scene, you're always thinking of it as a clinical psychologist. That's the essence of TSM. You get trained to think as a clinical psychologist while you direct your psychodramas. So you know how to keep people safe. You know how to go into the trauma and keep work it, you know, without it exploding all over like mm -hmm. it used to do, you know. Mm -hmm. And and so so my my I always had a giggle of like, well, what isn't clinical in what we do? And then I thought, well, you know, it started as a model working in my own very small private practice, um, working with adult children of alcoholics who had their own addictions. Who then I found yeah. out had eating disorders. I found underneath that they had sexual trauma. Trauma, you know, mm -hmm. so so it started there as a very Western model of yeah. treatment, but through uh -huh. that extension of traveling internationally with it, it became much more of a community-based model. You know, so just the whole transition of working in Asia since 2003, yeah. you know, sometimes yeah. you know months a year, was that that the transition of working in Asia taught me how to consider the family, the transgenerational family, the past family, the future family, the whole community. It became a totally east-west model when yeah. that happened. And it went from being, you know, let me do something in a small 12-person psychodrama group, you know, or uh -huh. a one-on-one -on -one in my office, to now we do Zoom groups of a hundred and some people around the world. You know, wow. and, and we're doing a team. We use a TSM team when we do groups on Zoom with 100 people. I mean, it's, wow. it's amazing what we've been able to achieve with that. And we're very excited about that. All the, the advantages that we're seeing about how you can take it online and reach more people and not give up any of your skills, just get better skills. Yeah, so, you know, like, it's, it's like, yes, it started clinically. Now it's a worldwide method that um, one of my favorite examples about it being applied a place you never would have imagined was there was the Women's, Women's Conference, the United Nations Women's Conference in Beijing in, I think, 1995. Um, mm -hmm. And um, we had uh, several people that were there to talk about women's rights and human rights. And one of the women, I wasn't personally there, but one of the women from Australia was a main speaker. She got anxious. So she asked one of the team members with her, would you whisper in my ear and be my containing double? 
And so she's like talking to, you know, thousands of women at the United Nations. And there's somebody standing there just close by going, I can take a deep breath. I can just look at the group and I can say exactly what I need to say. And I can all be okay. And I know what I'm doing. And I mean, so, so you think about that, you know, I mean, go, going from an individual therapy model to a model of supporting public speech. Um, in a United Nations conference, you know, it's it's pretty. Wow. It's been a pretty cool journey. You were like the, one of the pioneers on doing a psychodrama and your model online. So how did you learn? You like how did you learn to work online? What was it? Just your own experience? Uh -huh. Well, it, it really became required as we started doing training programs in Taiwan, training programs in China, training programs in Europe, training programs you know, in different places, that if people wanted supervision, we had to do it as video conferencing. Exactly. Okay. You know, so, that, so we've been doing that for 10 years. Yes. You know, yes. We've, we've been doing group supervision, we've been doing in individual supervision, mostly Mario Cosa and myself, but the, you know, the, the range of our uh -huh. certified trainers have been doing it. Uh -huh. So we were already, you know, used to working one-on-one. -on -one. Um, we'd uh -huh. already figured out you don't have to sit all the time and just talk, you know, you can get up and move your body. Yes. You can, um, you know, you can come into the camera and look closer and have a closer intimacy than if you look back. Yes. You know, I mean, we would already figured out a lot of things. So yeah. it really, our group of trainers um, that are currently working together right now, Sylvia Israel, Karen Drucker, Linda Ciatola, Mario Cosa, Stephen Durst, and myself, and uh -huh. Ina Hagenboom and Joshua Lee. They, uh -huh. We have like ramped it up from day one and we've always had an attitude of creativity. It's like each time we're on the Zoom, we think it's just another time to be creative. It's just another time to be spontaneous. Uh -huh. So we've kind of created this whole little system of working online where we do a nonverbal warm up, where we you know, sometimes work on the mini psychodrama stage, sometimes we work as a Zoom group. You know, uh -huh. so we're loving, loving it and um, yeah. you know, loving what we're learning from each other and from other people who are doing it. You published already the chapter in the book yeah, yeah, yeah. much prior COVID started yeah. on work online. Yeah. Could you please remind which book it is in? Because people will be looking for that book. It was, I think, a 2017 um, art chapter. It, it, was, it was about working in 2017, having worked on um, line for 10 years at that point. Yes. Uh -huh. So the only thing we've changed is that we've taken it now to, you know, groups of like rather than supervision groups of 20 or 40, yeah. uh -huh. you know, maybe now we're doing personal growth groups, we're doing international gatherings, we're doing a lot of free things because we believe yeah. it needs to be shared, um, uh -huh. you know, and we're having fun. That's really the best thing is that we're having fun. Would you please share uh, about your practice? Well, that's an interesting question. You know, you did give me these questions in advance. Um, and, you know, basically I just feel like I've been blessed to have the career I've had. Um, you know, I never thought, oh gee, I want to be an international trainer and create a model of psychodrama specific to trauma. I never thought that. I just followed each step of each step of each step. As I said, you know, I started working in a small private practice in Richmond, Virginia, um, a certified psychodramatist and, you know, between a master's and a PhD and just discovering how well psychodrama worked. And then also seeing, oh, but yes, yeah, sometimes people got triggered or they left a little bit worse or they didn't come back. And, you know, so as, as my education in the PhD land worked, I also changed how I practiced. Um, but you know, it was, it was very much just a, a very small private practice with adult children of alcoholics who, as I said, you know, um, had their own addictions, scratched the surface, you had eating disorders, scratched the surface, you had sexual trauma. And then it was just like, okay, so now how do we make it safe for people who are really traumatized and don't have the ego strength to really even be in a group in many ways? And so, you know, we expanded into more group practice. We started to form teams. We found that if you're really going to do in-depth psychodrama work, you need a team. And Zirka and I talked about that because, you know, that's what they did at Beacon from the very beginning. They always had teams. 
you know, they were called trained auxiliary egos and they were the professionals who chose to study there and spend days, weeks, months, years being auxiliaries for deeply psychotic patients. And so we thought, yes, okay, PTSD is not psychotic, but has psychotic-like symptoms at times in how people experience it, and that we need to have the safety of a team. So, you know, we've just had a grand journey of going out into the world and teaching people, here are some safe things to do about psychodrama. There's a clinical map we have. The trauma survivors, um, trauma survivors internal role item. It's a, it's a clinical map, it's a clinical formula, if you will, about how to help people get spontaneous and be creative and activate their autonomous healing center. And if they can do that, they can face any trauma. And, and so our, the practice is just about taking that teaching further and further and further and saying, like, you know, two thirds of people that have trauma actually get post-traumatic growth. Like people don't realize that. They think, oh, PTSD is like a, you know, a horrible thing. Some communal cultures don't even believe in PTSD um, because it means, PTSD means something bad happened to you. And if something bad happened to you, it's usually because it was your parent or your teacher or your grandparents or your society or, you know, people that you really don't want to believe bad things about. And in communal cultures, that's harder to talk about than in Western cultures um, where we're, you know, okay with criticizing more of our authorities, if you will. And so, you know, the, the model has become so multifaceted as we've been to Asian cultures and now Indian and Bangladesh, um, places that, you know, physically I would never be able to travel, but now I get to go online um, with the Zoom sessions. So, you know, my practice has just been a blessed joy of life from the very moment of living uh, as a psychodramatist. Once I discovered psychodrama and then my mind got fed by clinical psychology it was just a perfect blending for me. And people have said, well, how did you end up going around all these you know, places around the world with your model? And I said, well, anytime people asked me, I said yes. So anytime anybody asked me to go to a conference, I said yes. Anybody asked me to come back and do a workshop, I said yes. You know, um, my first workshop in Taiwan was in 2003 when SARS hit. We, we were masked. For my workshop, my first workshop in Asia, I did it with SARS, a coronavirus, floating around in Taiwan. Most Westerners left the hotel, and I thought, I'm here to do a trauma workshop. How can I leave if I'm here to do a trauma workshop? You know, wow. mind you, I was a lot younger than I am now, so I might not make the same decision now. But, you know, back then uh -huh. I was like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to put my mask on like everybody else is and we're going to do our trauma workshop. And we did. Well, it, I and I totally understand because I, I think like if it would be me, like I would be like thinking, so I'm here to do the trauma work and I need to leave. So I leave these people. They came here to do trauma work and this would be more traumatic for them that yeah, yeah, e even yeah, even yeah. the trainer left. Even, <laughs> even the trainer left, you know, but uh -huh. it was my commitment to staying there that did lead to me becoming a visiting professor since 2008 for a university, Chao University in Shaman, China. Um, for me being invited to, you know, Japan, Malaysia, you know, many of the Asian countries, because they say, oh, she didn't go away. Yeah. You know, I was, I was there at, um, in, Ch in Chengdu, China, and donated six weeks of time to work with teams, ch local Chinese teams, with first responders to the earthquake, to the 2008 earthquake. We worked with soldiers, military, um, medical professionals, nurses, doctors, social workers, educators, and we spent six weeks of time with local Chinese teams giving service to that, to that group. So a lot of, large part of my practice has been about service, um, you know, and um, everybody who has been on our TSM teams, I want to thank for their service because, um, 
people have put a lot of their own private resources into doing what we've done. And we've had some funded things, we've had some things that get paid, uh, at times we even get paid well. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's all been about we, anybody who's come into TSM and stayed in the community has been wanting about creating service. Yeah, and so, you know, like, like um, as part of talking about my practice, I just like to thank Dale Richard Buchanan, who was my TEP trainer, um, who I was on the board with, the American board, um, for nine years, and who has just been always a, a, a wonderful presence in the psychodrama community for me. Oh. Uh, um, he's been, he's been like maybe the good father to Zirka's good mother. Um, uh -huh. You know, and of course I've already um, spoken of Zirka. I want to thank Francesca Toscani, Mimi Cox, Kathy Wilson, who were part of the original team, and every uh -huh. single protagonist that trusted us to try out new things to make psychodrama safe. Oh, thank you. So I've loved my practice. I, I, I don't know how God blessed me or the cosmos or whatever higher power there is, but you know I've lived a lifetime of joy. In, com uh, in, yeah. in community. And I am so happy I have your books and uh, I use them. It's very, very helpful and practical books. This book here, because it's, 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 it's so well used right now as Stephen and I are, are writing the new one. But this was the first uh -huh. book. This was the first book. Okay, okay, this one. So this one will be uh, released in 2021, right? The, the, new, the newer version. The update. Mm -hmm. Yes, the update. Okay, okay. Uh, Kate, I know that you had very close relationship with Zerka Moreno. Could you please share um, maybe the one story about like one very important moment uh, with Zerka? Well, as you see here, um, I've moved into my psychodrama studio and I have my psychodrama theater there made by a woman, Annie Rosenthal in Australia. It's actually a replica of the original Moreno Theater. And there on top of it is Zerka. And that's her lovely picture from her memoirs to dream again. And so she always sits there as just kind of being a little voice in my head. Um, as, as she said, if you always have a double to talk to, then you're fine. And. So there's so many stories about Zirka. I mean, I was blessed, like my practice, like she just kind of came into my life and then she ended up living here for 12 years because her son lived here and she wanted to be closer to him. So I got the benefit of being with her. So I'll, I'll start with a funny, funny story and then tell the thing I, the way I think she most influenced my life. <laughs> so when we opened the Psychodrama the Theater of uh, Protection in Black Earth, Wisconsin, it was October 31st. And she said, I asked her, I said, oh, do you think this is um, a good day to open the theater? She said, of course, Kate, dear. That's what she always called me, Kate, dear. Um, Kate, dear, of course, this is the night the witches should ride. <laughs> 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 and so every Thanksgiving or every, every October, um, every Halloween, she came back to do another w workshop and the witches did fly. So that, that was always nice. But after she died, um, I realized, because she had lived here for 12 years, and every, um, I would go away, travel someplace and come back. She knew my schedule better than any of my friends did or even myself. And she would always say, oh, come over for lunch and tell me what you've been doing with Psychotron. Uh -huh. And she, now I see, I didn't know it at the time, but now I see she had an unfinished act hunger to go back to China, to Asia, to Taiwan with psychodrama. She fell and broke her hip and she was on her last round the world trip. She was a conscious, I'm going around the world for the last time in my life trip. And she fell and broke it in Eastern Europe. And so she never got back to China. She never got back to Taiwan, to Asia, places that she, ever after she was so curious about what's happening in psychodrama there, what's happening in psychodrama there, because she had planted seeds there before with Gong Shu and, and then Dr. Lai Nian Hua in Taiwan. And so she got Dr. Lai and I connected, and that's how I got to Taiwan during SARS and how I got to China 
for the first mental health conference in China in 2004, and how I became a visiting professor at a Chinese university. And now I see it was like, oh, because every time I came back from lunch, she'd be like, what's happening in China? What's happening in Asia? Uh -huh. Like, you know, what more can reinforcement can you want from your psychodrama mama, <laughs> you know, than, than, than to show wonderful enthusiasm about what you're doing. And so now I look back and I go, that was really her unfinished um, act hunger. I'm not sure I would have like had an act hunger to go around the world. Maybe, uh -huh. you know, as I said, it was never a conscious thought of mine. Oh, let me go around the world and see and become an international trainer. And yet that is who I am. And so that's how I think she influenced me the most. And, and, and anytime I get anxious, I just look at her picture right there all the time. And I hear her little doubling voice saying in my brain, it's all okay. Oh, thank you so much for sharing. Could you please share your message, your main message to the viewers? Well, my main message is that we have never needed trained psychodramatists more than we do now. That the call for people to do trauma-informed care using experiential methods is strong and powerful. And yet what happens at times is people don't get enough training and they go out and they you know, have 100 hours of this and they try that and they try this, but there's no cohesive system the therapeutic spiral model pro provides a cohesive system for anybody wanting to learn how to safely do psychodrama or other experiential methods. And so please, please study psychodrama, but ple and please anchor it into clinical psychology, anchor it into counseling, to social work, to the things that have grown up since psychodrama first started. Nobody knew the things we knew now. We didn't know anything about the neurobiology. I mean, oh my goodness, like neurobiology shows, action methods work, psychodrama works. So please learn it well, do it well, open your heart, open your own autonomous healing center and give your gift to the world. That would be my message. Mm -hmm. Kate, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate this uh... Uh, your time and your contribution and uh, uh, that you participated in this uh, little project. Thank you so much. You're, you're, you're welcome and I see that you are doing already what I just asked viewers to do. That you're giving your gift and okay. it's a fantastic gift that you are um, creating a history of amazing psychodramatists um, yeah. and that you are making that contribution as one yourself. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Guys, thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video. Namaste. I've been doing uh, these uh, interviews uh, on psychodrama project for two years and I realized that there is a big field not covered of online education in action explorations and specifically in psychodrama. So I've been thinking about this and I started to work on that uh, almost a year ago and now I'm coming up with a project. Uh, in December, first five programs should be on website actionexplorations.education. International trainers on different languages uh, would be introduced on this uh, portal. All programs are pre-recorded. All programs have the part with lectures, the part with case, and uh, the part with evaluation. So you can get certificate at the end, and you can use your hours for your continuum education, for certification with, with your boards. If the programs will be in English, I'm uh, talking right now to translate them uh, to Russian, Korean, Spanish, and Portuguese international trainers would be presented there At this moment i mostly work with american trainers but later i am uh, looking forward to work with international trainers first two modules uh, with kate hudgens are coming in december so you can see them uh, in december already available on action explorations uh, dot education and we are planning to do much more TSM modules also, not just two with Kate Hudgens. With Kate, we, we plan to do two in December 
and then another two in January and I think up to 10 only with her and then with another trainers too. Guys, I'm looking forward to uh, hear your feedback and uh, I'm looking forward for co-creation with students and with trainers and just uh, make psychodrama more available online. I also looking forward for the programs which would be not to psych for psychodramatists or people who are using uh, action exploration methods uh, in their work, but for just regular people, how to use uh, psychodrama in their life, how to improve the life quality with uh, action explorations. Mm -hmm.